I guess you have heard about the idea behind the universal basic income. So what's the idea? Capitalists own businesses, people get replaced by robots, robots work faster and 24 hours per day so they don't take vacations or make mistakes and the effect is money saved. Now who gets that money? Well, a very small percentage of capitalists. So now you have 200 people that have all the money and 200 million around them who can barely survive. So you need to give them a sort of a handout so that they could survive because there are no jobs for them. The robots took our jobs. Now the funny thing is that the rich might be scared of this situation more than the poor, but the point is that we do not know how to solve this inequality in societies. It seems like it's an integral part of every organized system. The small number of people will always gather the majority of profits. Lobsters, lobsters, lobsters all the way down. Now, this is not only the case in business. The stupendous majority of classical compositions people listen to belongs to a very few composers. And then when you zoom in, the overwhelming majority of the compositions people listen from that composer represents just a small number of their compositions. And so it is with most of the human creation, sometimes called the Pareto distribution, 80-20 rule, 90-10 rule, etc. But however interesting that subject is, let's go back to the track. With robots and artificial intelligence, we're talking about unprecedented inequality. There are lots of skeptics who think that robots and artificial intelligence will not disrupt the society that much, that some jobs will die out but new ones will be created, saying that the same warnings existed in the Industrial Revolution. Which is true, people were warned then as well about machines that will take all of their jobs. That's how the Luddite movement was created. But then we transitioned somehow successfully. People got oriented into the service industry and with acceptable losses and sacrifices we all survived. But they're missing the huge difference. Uh, to train someone to move from working on the machine to working in the service industry is not such a big of a deal. But in a few years with self-driving trucks and taxis, how many millions of truck drivers will be, you be able to put back in school and teach them how to be virtual reality designers for the metaverse? or regular coders or CNC machine programmers, not to talk about programming jobs themselves being taken by the AI. So that being said, I do not want to address the question of universal basic income or the fourth industrial revolution in general. I want to talk about what that means for us in the building industry. What are the skeptics saying here? To be honest, I don't really hear people addressing the subject that much. The building industry is very conservative and always late. So we are late on commenting on that too, I guess. There are some voices here and there saying maybe that the 3D printer is slow, that a bricklayer will do it faster and cheaper. And we all know that's a very weak argument. The 3D printer can make any freeform shape and it can work 24 hours without sleeping or eating or drinking. And it's just in the first phase of development. So. Let's examine what automation means practically in the building industry and why many people will lose their jobs and will have to be taken care of in some way. Now we will talk about two phases, design phase and the construction phase. So let's see how many jobs we can kill in each one of them. The very basic design, sketching on paper or even sketching digitally is something that I think won't be automated for some time. Actually that can be automated and I did talk about it and will talk about it in the future. But to express true creativity judged by humans, the AI algorithms will have to be developed a bit more. But once you're out of the design phase, which is actually one of the shortest phases in architectural project, once you start drawing and modeling, now you're entering this automation arena. So we all know the old way was 2D, right? You draw a floor plan, then you draw a plan of the second floor, then you draw one section, second section, third, fourth. Then you draw some details so that you know what materials and layers to use on the construction site. And all this drawing took a lot of hours and a lot of people. And then you change something on the shape of the building, well, draw the plans and sections all over again. We all know we can forget that now, that that was in the past. Now we model immediately in 3D, and that's the idea behind BIM, right? The building information modeling. That if I draw a wall, I immediately draw a 3D wall and all the layers and material information is inside. So if I draw two walls, the connection is made automatically. If I insert a window, the hole is made automatically. Once I have my 3D model, I can make a section or a plan wherever I want. It will be automatically generated for me. Okay, so I killed a lot of drawing jobs right there. One, two people can now model a building in 3D and export 100 sections and plan drawings with one click instead of armies of people drawing them manually. But that's just the beginning. Let us move a bit to the field I am more familiar with. 
complex geometry and structural design. Imagine someone hires you to help them with a big steel glass roof. And in my case, I don't have to imagine because that is how we earn our daily bread here. What they usually give you is just a surface and then tell you this surface can change. So keep everything parametric and automated so that when we do change the surface, you can generate everything at the click of a button. Okay, no problem. Let's start automating. And let's do this as a guessing game. I will describe a hypothetical project. And although it is a hypothetical here, it reflects some of the projects we worked on and are still working on. As I explained in the previous video, although we are working on very large projects, some of them costing up to $2 billion and doing exactly the things I'm describing here, I cannot show anything or even mention many of them. So let's imagine a project and all the numbers I will give you will reflect the projects we are currently working on. And then I will ask you to estimate the number of people needed to develop their, that project. Imagine we have a huge steel structure. And now imagine that for some reason this is more of a machine than a building. It has so much equipment and electronics inside, it's more complex than a car or a piano. And let's say we are not working on a building like that right now. So we will start with maybe a simple linear grid network using algorithms. We can adjust it manually from time to time, but it is a nice and relaxed process. And we will slowly add secondary structure, tertiary structure, and so on. Now let's see, we have around 30,000 structural members, let's say, steel and aluminum profiles. And maybe we have around 25,000 joints, these connections between profiles. And then every connection and every beam is unique and looks like a Swiss cheese full of holes and cuts. And the first thing we have to do is model everything in 3D. Every connection will have those cuts and bolts and connection plates and depending on your structural system you may, might have different elements like shading, isolation, openings, windows, whatever. Okay, once you have that you can export this 3D in some BIM acceptable format but people will still want 2D drawings. So we'll have to generate thousands and thousands of drawings. Every beam, every connection, every plate needs its own drawing for production. Then there will be some assembly drawings. There will be Excel lists of parts kilometers long and many manufacturers will be happier if you gave them the G-code based CNC files, right? They are used to cut beams and metal plates or bend metal plates using CNC machines. So now you also have to generate thousands and thousands of CNC files for every beam or plate or joint. How about static analysis? Can you please automatically generate a statical model so that we don't have to create one from scratch with all the cross sections and load cases and load combinations automatically defined? No problem. That's what we do. Okay, I could continue, but I will stop here. And you know that this project costs millions and millions of dollars. And as I said, the one we are working on at the moment costs close to 2 billion. That's with a B. And if I ask you how many people do you need to employ to do all of this, I will give you 10 seconds to think about it. Okay, you thought about it enough. If you're not coming from the building industry, you might say um, 100. You need a very large office to handle this, right? That's why all those huge architectural offices exist for projects like this. Yes, you might be right if this was 1955. If you're coming from the building industry, you might say, I can do this with 15, 20 people. It would maybe take us a year and if there is a clear design of all those elements, we can maybe do it in 8 to 10 months. Okay, that's not bad. That's probably the answer you would get if you called most of the offices today. And if you call us, I will tell you we need five people and maybe a couple of months. And I promise that in the next few years, our tools will be so developed that we can do it in a team of two people, just so that the one person doing it has someone to talk to. No human will manually draw any of these drawings or any part of these drawings. Actually, we're trying to eliminate 2D drawings altogether. No human will generate any of these CNC files manually. No human will cut these beams, bend these plates, cut these holes. CNC machines will do that. One person will sit at a computer and control the machine. So if a couple of people can take a surface, a sketch, a design, an idea, and generate everything production ready within a few months for a project like that, how many people do you think we need for something as simple as this? a house or a residential building? How many architects do we need in the future? And I know I'm sometimes boring uh, with bringing up these same free form surface examples, the ones that you can barely see anywhere, but I'm showing them as the most complex architecture we have today. If we're talking about the standard architecture, there we can automate everything much more easily. 
we barely even need to program stuff. And how about the construction side? Well, 3D printing is well on the way, and as I said, a worker can lay bricks relatively fast, but they cannot work 24 hours per day. The printers will be faster and faster, and the architects can go wild with creativity and design some really cool and daring shapes. The printer won't complain. How about steel and timber structures? Well, you saw that everything is generated automatically and enumerated. So all you need is someone to connect those pieces at the site. Like Lego. Yes, we still need humans to do that, but they're not lifting the beams, right? They're heavily supported by machines. And the machines are taking over more and more of the work until the robots will actually do the assembly on the site. Now, when I mentioned Lego, I firmly believe that prefabrication is the future of architecture. You're not influenced by randomness of the weather or unpredicted events on the construction site. You can make your walls, ceilings, columns, beams in the factory in a controlled environment where 3D printers and robot arms can put a structure together in the same way they're putting a car together nowadays. And then you just need to assemble them at the site or the machines will assemble them. Now think about it, for a normal family house, without any exaggeration, a single person can now model it and prepare it for production within a month. A house can be automatically fabricated in some hole and then five, six people can assemble it in a few days. How many working hours are there for a single house? I cannot give you any concrete numbers or show you any graphs. I can just tell you what we can do and what people who are automating the building industry can do. And every day we can do it faster and faster. And that number of hours is much smaller than you think. And it is getting smaller every day. So I think that the universal basic income is not the happiest solution, but it seems like it's the smartest we have for now. Most of professional drivers like truckers and taxi drivers will soon lose their jobs. All telemarketers will be out of the job in the next few years. Service, people at the register, those jobs are gone. And the building industry is not so immune to this. So huge building corporations doing everything the old way are still going to survive because they're too big to fail very well connected politically and economically, they will survive for quite a while, especially in the industry that is one of the most conservative ones. And there's some objective reasons for that as well. Building projects like this takes a lot of responsibility and a lot of, a lot of experience. So if you pay a company $10 million to do this with 100 people instead of paying someone $500,000 to do it with five people, that's just because you don't trust these hipsters, right? It's just not how it is done but that will change. Slowly but surely that will change. So if you're working in the building industry, I want you to think about it. What are you doing right now? Is it something that can be automated? Are you drawing plans and sections manually? Are you calculating the surfaces and volumes of walls? Filling out Excel sheets? Counting numbers of windows? The amount of reinforcement inside of a concrete? Something we can maybe generate at the click of a button? Think about what you're doing and Join us on this automation site so we can not only build projects faster, but projects that are more creative. Carthago Adelenda Est. Carthage must be destroyed. That's how Cicero ended every one of his speeches, at least the legend says. And I feel like ending each of my videos with the same plea. Please, it's 2022. Let's stop building these ugly boxes and let the automation free us and let us express our creativity. Now, I would be happy if you share this video so we can spread the word about the inevitable automation. And I will keep working on the online lessons for different software and help you understand and learn the techniques we are using. Subscribe so that you're informed when new videos come out. Check out the description for various links in which I can help you and you can help us. And stay free. Peace. Yeah.